G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to the Rundown Under with Mags, my vlog series that is supposed to be a monthly recurring video that is almost never ever scheduled on time and I regularly miss because I'm kind of crap. Anyways, <laughs> moving on from that, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. The background footage today, of course, is DCS 2.1. It has had the lighting upgrade. It is absolutely gorgeous. I will be doing a standalone video on this very soon, but we have some other stuff to cover, and it is actually also DCS related. In fact, this whole video is pretty much gonna be focused on DCS and AL2. So let's get right into it. We'll start off with DCS World, the F18 module. We've been waiting for this thing for an extremely long time. Wags has been teasing the hell out of us with screenshots of this thing, some of which you'll see on screen right now. It looks absolutely fantastic and very much in a finished state. Well, it looks like we'll be finally getting our hands on it very soon. They are going to unveil the F-18C module at E3 2017. So that's E3 this year, which is only four days away at the time of this video being created. Now it is going to be unveiled at the Thrustmaster booth. Thrustmaster obviously being a big supporter and working tightly with the DCS developers in the past. Uh, the entire A-10 Warthog uh, HOTAS system was developed as a result of the DCS A10C module, that's where it came from. Now the fact that the F18 is being unveiled at the Thrustmaster booth specifically does of course make one wonder whether or not Thrustmaster has something in development to associate with the F18 as well. Now, of course, I have no information on that for sure, but it may be worth your time, even if it's something you normally wouldn't do, tuning into the E3 coverage, especially around the Thrustmaster booth this year. At the very least, they have said that the F-18 module will be on site and it will be flyable by those at the event. So the module is obviously complete enough that people can actually use it. So that will be on the table and there will be obviously the first live video of the F-18 in action will result out of this. At the most, the Thrustmaster website for their E3 coverage does actually state that there will be four world premieres at their booth this year. So, potentially a new HOTAS system that is related to DCS World, maybe some replacement parts for a uh, for the existing Warthog, such as an exchangeable flight stick to take the Warthog flight stick from the Warthog pack and replace it with something more F-18 themed. Who knows exactly what they're going to be going for there, regardless it is going to be something to tune in for, so I fully recommend that you do. So moving on from the F-18, next up we have the F-14 to talk about. Now Heat Blur has been taking a leaf out of Wags's book and has been stoking the fires of the hype train and has released some new screenshots. Now there's some interesting stuff in the screenshots themselves. For the most part it seems like the physical modelling of the aircraft is now complete. It looks like the materials work has been done. All that remains is the textures themselves. Most of the internals seem to be operating as well because they haven't just left us with a few screenshots to oogle over we also have a video now as it says at the start of the video it's important to note that the sound effects are not finalized the graphics are still being worked on in fact this looks like it's before it had its lighting pass which turned it into the chrome cat possibly before all the materials work have been done as well and the cockpit itself is a placeholder at this point in time so what does this really show us well even though the cockpit is a placeholder, as you can see, switches and toggles are operating inside of the cockpit, which means that most, if not all, of the work to actually make the cockpit function itself has been completed. So when the cockpit itself is finalized, it should be simply a matter of swapping out the assets and making everything line up with the new buttons. So that side of the work appears to be mostly, if not completely, finished. It's also worth noting that from the external shots, we can see that it looks like most of the external animation has also been completed on the aircraft. Everything is functioning and moving as it should. Heat Blur also said on their Facebook page with the last set of screenshots on June 7th that they're currently working on the custom multiplayer, multi-crew functionality on the aircraft. Now to be working on the pilot Rio functionality for multi-crew in the F-14, most of the aircraft systems would need to be operational, otherwise there are certain things you simply wouldn't be able to test. So this is telling me that the aircraft is actually getting pretty close to completion at this point. 
And here we are, landed on the carrier, which gives us a very brief look at the Forestal, which is also being made for the F-14. Of course, we have a few videos of that as well, specifically the island on the carrier. So what we're looking at here is the island of the Forestal class that is under development by Heat Blur as well to ship with the F-14 and will be your point of deployment. Now this is clearly a work in progress at this time and is marked as such. We're looking at a ship that's in grey box format at this point and we appear to be looking at the extremely high poly count model that is usually the earlier part of development before it's baked down into a much more compact, much more reasonable low poly count model for actually operating within the simulation environment. And so far it's looking pretty good. The details are exceptional across the board, and in fact these models, it's actually worth taking a look at them to see the amount of detail that actually goes into the models themselves. It's not always apparent when you're taking off and landing from a carrier exactly how much work has gone in to make that carrier look and feel real. This one here is going to be pretty nice. So that's what's coming in the future in regards to new modules with the F-18 looking to be here very soon and the F-14 hopefully not too far behind. But what about our more recent modules? The World War II modules of course are being constantly updated in regards to Normandy and most interestingly the latest one is for the assets pack. In the recent news release for 2.1 Update 1, a new series of screenshots for the C-47, the JU-88A4, the 251 Transport and the Puma were released. Now these models of course being part of the assets pack are for the AI themselves, however it does show that there is still more coming to that assets pack, in fact I expect there will be a lot more updates like this coming into the future with a lot more vehicles added. It was also confirmed that currently in development is the P-47 and the ME262. I should however be clear here that these are most likely AI developments as well that you will be able to add in, not player pilotable aircraft yet. We still have our fingers crossed for an announcement that an actual 262 module is being developed. So that pretty much has us up to date with everything that's been going on over the last month with DCS at this time. As I said, the newest module release is obviously Normandy and the Assets Pack, and it is absolutely fantastic. I've noticed actually playing on the release version now that there is a lot of stuff that has been cleaned up. As I'm sure you noticed in the background, the beaches now look far more detailed than they did on my initial fly through. So this is very nice. I'm very, very, very happy with what we see here. I think the Normandy map is entirely worth it. And for those that keep asking, yes, Southern England is actually modeled. In fact, that's where I flew this mission from. I took off from Southern England, flew across the English Channel. It actually takes longer than you would think, even at supersonic speeds, and then flew down the coast. But anyways, on to IL-2. Now, IL-2 has been releasing a lot of information over the last month as well, specifically in regards to the new aircraft for the Battle of Kaban. So we'll go through these in the order they were released. Starting off on the 19th of last month, 2017, the A-20G images started getting released. Now this is one of the aircraft that I am most certainly looking forward to the most. I love bomber gameplay in IL-2 and I especially love well-modeled bombers. There's so few World War II sims that actually get them right and IL-2 is thankfully one of them. The A-20 of course is a Lend-Lease aircraft and as such will appear for Soviet forces. Moving on, on the 26th, of course, we got our first look at the HS-129. Yes, the duck is coming into IL-2 Stromovic. And it is looking pretty fantastic. Now, there are only four screenshots of the aircraft itself. The modelling seems to be quite impressive. We don't really have a whole lot of other information on it. However, I'm entirely sure the aircraft will be fantastic, and I'm looking forward to taking it out for a spin. And it's definitely worth having a look at these shots. It truly is fantastic looking. And last of all, on the first of this month, the screenshots for the Spitfire 5B were released, and this is another aircraft that is looking absolutely amazing, and there's actually quite a lot of hype around this plane, for obvious reasons. It's the first Spitfire to go into IL-2. The bit that was really amazing about this was the sheer volume of skins that were portrayed inside of the screenshots. It was almost like 777 was trying to demonstrate how many skins will actually be available. Now the Spitfire 5B of course is another Soviet Lend-Lease aircraft and will be joining the Soviet forces from this point on. 
Now, of course, there was one other thing that the devs wanted to show us in that particular devlog, and it was this new unit that will be showing up inside of the Battle of Kaban. It looks like the Soviet forces are going to be doing a little bit of submarine hunting, and I think that sounds absolutely fantastic. Anyways, ladies and gents, that will bring this short update video to a close. I just wanted to catch up on the planes that were actually being released on IL-2, the information that is coming out for DCS at the moment. Remember, if you're interested in seeing the live unveiling of the F-18 module or just want to check up with what's going on in regards to DCS, E3 this year at the Thrustmaster booth. If you're there live, that's where you want to be. If you're watching online, that's the information you want to be looking for, and you should be able to get some footage from the F-18, see how it actually flies, hear some of the first feedback on it, and see whatever Thrustmaster happens to be up to this year, which should be rather interesting. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies.